Thanks, Sanup, and uh, just to continue from uh, what Ravi talked about, 98, that's the time when we started talking that we should start something of POC in India. I was living in Japan at that time. For the last 25 years I've been away and now I'm coming back to India. I started learning POC in uh, 1990 when Goldrat had done a very big uh, improvement in Procter & Gamble where I was staying. And that's how I've been learning for the last almost uh, 28 years what EOC is and applying it in my life and in others' life. The visa today's day was a, an inauspicious day and I found it very auspicious for me today. I met two persons in this group whom I, I know closely. One was a very surprised meeting, Shalesh and Delia. And we were together in uh, Union Carbide in 1974 and sitting in the same room or perhaps in the same office. That was a very big surprise to me and a pleasant surprise. And I met uh, Gaurav, happens to be my relative, my, his wife and my wife are both sisters, cousin sisters. So I'm very happy to introduce Gaurav. Gaurav Saroop is the managing director of Paharpur Cooling Towers and the chairman of KSB Pumps Limited. He is the past president of the Indian Chamber of Commerce of Kolkata, the Plastic Exports Promotion Council, Agri Horticulture Society of India, past chairman of FIKI, West Bengal State Council, and has been a member of the Board of Governors of Iron and Calcutta. He is also on the board of several companies. Parker Cooling Towers Limited, along with its wholly owned subsidiary SPX, Dry Cooling, based in Europe, is the leading global manufacturer of industrial cooling equipment and has footprints across uh, Korea, China, India, Turkey, South Africa, Europe and US. The Parkour Group also has interests in real estate, Parkour reality, flexible packaging and wind energy. Parkour 3P is a pioneer in liquid flexible packaging in India and is a leading manufacturer of flexible packaging material for consumer goods in India. The Parpo Group is also a partner of KSB AG of Germany, one of the world's leading pumps and valve manufacturer, in a joint venture in India, KSB Pump Limited, which is the head, which is headquartered in Pune. The group also has interests in timber plantations, lumber manufacturing in South Africa. Karasurup is an MBA class of 80 from Harvard Business School, US, and a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering, 1972, from Jadavpur University, Kolkata. He is an alumnus of St. Xavier's School in Kolkata. He lives in Kolkata and is married to Parul and has three daughters. Welcome, Bharat, to share his experience. Thank you, Pradeep. And I must first thank Mr. Ravi Gilali for giving me the opportunity here to speak and address all of you. It is in a sense a responsibility and I think I uh, owe it to, let us say, the community to share my experiences and the transformation that we carried out in one of our businesses, the flexible packaging business, as a result of TOC implementation. Again, It's one thing to study a theory or a philosophy and it's another thing altogether to implement it. And it is there that I give the credit to Ravi for having been such a good teacher and a strict taskmaster when it came down to implementation. I've known Ravi for several years and then it is was in one of those general meetings that we met and then he talked about DOC and it sounded very interesting and I shared our experience with this business in part 3B where we had been, we had set up the business uh, when I'm talking 2006, we had set it up in 1995 and we had lost money 11 years you know, on a continuous basis. The business was in in a sense, a stepchild. We got into it. Let's let's not get into details. Let's say 
a certain degree by accident. And having got into it, it was a small business as compared to the main business of the group. And it really never got the attention it deserved. And you know, we went on, we lurched on you know, sort of one year to another. And then Ravi came along. And we had this chat and he said, why don't you give it a try? So that's where the, let's say, the journey of transformation started. Ravi came in and then he said, and we looked at it, we discussed it amongst ourselves. I remember talking to my father about it and he said, well, you can't be any worse off. So give it a try. Let's see what happens. And then Ravi came in and then he was, he made certain demands. And one of the demand was, he said, you will give me in the initial stages for the first three or four months, two days every month. And he was very demanding. And he said, I want undivided attention on those two days. And I said, thereafter, he said, then you can bring it down, maybe a day a month. But that's the minimum I need. And I said, would you need more than that? He said, hopefully not. I said, fine. So we got going on this journey and it was a journey of learning first. You learn, your assumptions were being challenged. And one of the first things was that we always looked at the business, the customers, we were trying to go after certain trophy customers. We felt we needed long runs in order to make money. And so we had, let us say, a business strategy which was being questioned, which was questioned. And the fundamental paradigm of trying to look for long runs so that you could cut down cost and you could, you know, sort of economize on your operating parameters was challenged. Then he brought in a few key measurement, let's say, he aligned our measurements and we introduced the concept of T, throughput. And then there was, we said that in this business, Timely delivery is very critical. So the concept of OTIF was brought in. And then the most important thing in a sense was the weekly reviews. Very strict weekly reviews. And I would say that the discipline which was imparted in that little management group which we had was very, I would say, you know, painful in the initial stages. Right from, let's say, when we had a review meeting, if it was supposed to start at 9, it had to start at 9, not at 9.01. Everybody had to be there. And this is where I give Ravi the credit. You know, he stood there with a stick and made sure everybody did what they were supposed to do. Okay. And, you know, everything else would have been on paper. And it was not one of those experiences where we just went, attended classes and, you know, so said that yes, this is something which we should do, but this is something which we actually got down to doing. Get your hands dirty, focus on the task at hand. And we were challenged. But the interesting thing was that results started coming very quickly. And in three months time, we could see a turnaround happening. And we got better every month, every week rather. And he said, your timeline, time frame is one week. We'll do a weekly review. And then I used to have to come in once in four weeks for the so called monthly review. And we would go through a very rigorous process. And in that process, as I was saying earlier, we challenged our basic assumption of, let's say, believing that long runs were the key to profitability. And we had to turn the entire paradigm on its head. And so something, it used to take us four hours to change over from one job to another. And that was brought down to, I think, a theoretical uh, value of 23 minutes. Okay? And which we standardized in about 30 minutes. So something which used to take four hours was brought down to 30 minutes. And that allowed us to make the changes. We went after a different set of customers. Okay? There was talk of segmentation and various kinds of things. And we thought the simple thing was we needed customers who would 
give us margins. As opposed to the so-called trophy customers, who we used to say that kept us on liquid oxygen. The oxygen would not let us die and the liquid would not let us live. You know, it's one of those Ajit's jokes. So, when we did all this, we got and we also focused very tightly on motive, the full the basics of operations, the full kits and so on and so forth. That we found that our motive performance on time and full performance improved dramatically. And I am very happy to say here that over the last 11 years or so, or 12 years, this is something which we've been able to sustain. And today we have motives of over 90%. That being consistently so. And it is something which I would say is a, you know, so it's a leading parameter for us, and we stand out in the industry because of let's say a high motive that we can achieve and promise to our customers. Along the way, we also focused on inventories. We were able to print down inventories very significantly as a result of certain tools such as the DBM and so on that was introduced. And uh, we could see that uh, we got operating efficiencies as well. The weekly reviews continue and they've been institutionalized. And we've seen great benefits coming out as a result of those weekly reviews. The measurements, we came down to a set of simple metrics, the T, the OTIF and a few others. And as a result of that, we've been able to, you know, as this, as is said, measurements drive behavior. Our behavior has been influenced as a result of those measurement uh, metrics that we put in. And so we've come a long way. And I would say that uh, it makes us believers. Even recently, just about two weeks ago, in one of our plants in Maroda, not in the packaging business, but in our cooling tar business. Somebody said I want to uh, outsource certain things because I don't have capacity in the machine. So I, the first thing I did was, I said, have you read the goal? He said, no. So I asked the library to issue a copy of the goal to him. And I said, we'll talk next on this subject after you read this book. So just day before yesterday, I passed him in the corridor and he said, you know, we need to talk about it. I said, have you read the goal? He said, yes. He said, now we are really focusing on, uh, you know, we are implementing uh, the lessons that are espoused in the goal and we are working 24 by 7, the constraint, we are exploiting the constraint and so on and so forth. So I said, okay, he's, he's on track okay. and we'll have the discussion. So I would say the theory of constraints is a very, very powerful theory and it can transform a business as it transformed our business. And I am a firm believer in the benefits that it can bring to any business. As I was said, it need not be restricted to the to a manufacturing business alone, but it can bring about a transformation in several other types of businesses. And you are a great example of what it has done for you in the insurance business. And then, of course, the question comes in: What next? You know, we've seen eleven years of progress, okay. and then the question comes in: What next? And this is again something which we are going through in terms of you know brainstorming, challenging ourselves, what is it that we can do, what is it that we should do, what is it that we should not do. And in one one thing which has I think I learned from Ravi that don't chase the top line unnecessarily. Okay. Reality is cash. And are you seeing cash in your business? Okay. If you see cash, that's really what you should be focusing on. And therefore, you know, when we see more and more, when we see more and more cash, that's the only time when you realize that you are actually making more and more money. Okay, because more and more money does not necessarily mean uh, more and more money unless you see the cash. Okay? Otherwise, you are chasing a top line, and that could be an illusion that you are chasing because you are not necessarily making money. Okay, so these are some of the lessons that we learned. And uh, we've come a long way and we hope to continue on our journey. I request Mr. Pradeep Kumar to please hand over a memento uh, for our appreciation.